the talk today on laboratory management in renal pathology. And so as um, Dr. Ellis is giving her talk, please feel free to enter any questions within the chat and we'll have the last 15 or so minutes to go through um, questions at that time. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to, um, if it's okay, I'm just gonna stop my video real quick because that's a little bit distracting for me. Um, I can still see all of your beautiful faces though. Um, always remembering to express gratitude um, when people uh, show up to hear what I have to say. It, all, it still amazes me to this day. And especially, especially for people who've gotten up on a Sunday morning or Sunday evening or you know, wherever you are, what time it is, I really appreciate you logging in this morning um, to hear more about laboratory management and renal pathology. So the purpose of this lecture is to highlight some of the behind the scenes tasks and challenges associated with number one, managing and maintaining a renal pathology laboratory, and also to educate listeners, particularly our nephro nephrology colleagues about those tasks in association with providing high quality and accurate testing results. And I feel like this is a perfect subsequent follow-up lecture to last week's GlomCon presentation by Vanessa Bajol, uh, where she spoke about renal pathology for the nephrologist. So this, if you missed that, or if you, you know, did see it, this will have a little bit of that and we'll dig a little bit deeper into some of the management decisions and regulatory processes of the laboratory that affect our work on a daily basis. I'm also drinking coffee this morning. So if you hear me take a pause, that's just to refresh and rehydrate there. So an alternate title for this talk could be all the things that renal pathologists do at work when they're not diagnosing kidney biopsies. And that's just a, a mildly to not humorous way of emphasizing the purpose of this lecture, which is, as I stated, to provide some insight and some background um, to all the behind the scenes work and duties that as a nephrologist, you really don't have to worry about, um, but that are crucial to making sure we get you the best results possible. As you know, pathology is very different from clinical uh, patient facing medicine. And so even though our quote unquote patients are glass slides and laboratory data and digital images, we also obviously care very much for the living patient um, and our detailed analysis of our slides and images allows us to provide the proper treatment and direction for the care of our shared patients. And so in laboratory, in the laboratory world, there are a variety of technical steps required even before we have the slides in front of us. Um, and in the laboratory world, we refer to that as the pre-analytical phase. So I'll go into a little bit of that. So the process begins in the gross pathology laboratory where kidney biopsy specimens are received from wherever they come from at your institution. It can be the interventional radiology or the nephrology clinic, wherever they come from, they all land in the gross pathology lab. Um, and then the kidney biopsies are then accessioned, which means given a pathology number, uh, they're examined and described and measured and divided into separate pieces by a pathologist assistant or a lab tech, all while maintaining specimen identification on those tiny fragments of tissue. So essentially the biopsies get divided up into these three portions and then sort of sent to three different areas of our lab. And then they all need to come back together at some point and get united under one unified diagnosis. So the main studies that we do, as you probably already know, light microscopy, immunofluorescence, electron microscopy, and then sometimes we do some additional studies like molecular or microbiology that are needed for the uh, biopsy. And um, in the photo, that's, that's not a kidney biopsy. I think that's an appendix, um, but um, you can see that there is tissue there and there is a specimen identification number on that container. It's also on those cassettes. And that's where the process starts for us in the gross pathology lab. Oops, sorry. So the sample for light microscopy is submitted for a very complex multi-step mechanical process where it's subjected to a variety of alcohols and fixatives in a processor. Um, and then it's removed from the processor and, and embedded in paraffin wax. And that's where you get your FF, everybody talks about FFP, formal and fixed and paraffin embedded tissue. That is what you're seeing on that bottom panel photograph there that is embedding in paraffin wax. Um, and then once that hardens, it's cut into several ribbons and suspended on a water bath. That's what you're seeing on the top half of the image there. And then those, uh, those ribbons are, uh, each of those squares are one section of the tissue. Those get separated. Those sections are layered onto a glass slide and, and then they're stained with different stains. 
um, and then they're labeled with the.